Hello and welcome to the FBTV Weekly Highlight Show. Well, rain once again wreaked havoc across the leagues this weekend, but there were some games that went ahead, and one of those is the critical Trophy Superstore Premier League match between Albany Creek and North Star. Critical for Albany Creek in terms of their relegation survival. They've already picked up wins in the under-16s, under-18s and reserves. And Travis Jackson looked to get them on the board early. Save in there from Horry. Joseph. And Northstar able to clear away. Corners played on. Joseph tried to get a touch in it. And it was Reynolds at the end of it with a shot on goal saved by Horry. Joseph. Plays it forward. Finds Domofsky. Domofsky at the edge of the box. Slots the ball past Kigo Horry. And Albany Creek have the lead after 20 minutes. Through ball from Joseph. And Reynolds is well on side. And Domofsky does all the rest. 1 0 to Albany Creek. Free kick here to North Star through Agata. Christian Smith comes, manages to get something on the ball. Corner in, fisted away there by Smith. And Albany Creek looked to move it on the counter quickly. Jackson. Solo run here from Travis Jackson. Oh, fantastic goal there from Travis Jackson. He made it all himself. And then lobbed Kigo Horry at the end of it. And Albany Creek take a 2-0 lead. Travis Jackson from deep inside his own defensive half. Gets round one North Star defender. Then the second. Hassled there. But able to be more physical on the ball. And Albany Creek 2-0 to the good. Clearance from Smith. For Jamoto. Onto his right foot. And Yazuyuki Fujimoto makes it three for Albany Creek. Just manages to find a way through the blue and white shirts. Horry with the ball. Rolls it out. On for Murata, who can't get a foot on it. Now it falls for Miller. Miller on for Domovsky. And Dennis Domofsky has a double. And Albany Creek are cruising at 4-0 up. Cameron Miller plays the ball through for Domofsky. He was free by himself. And Horry couldn't save the shot. Again, Albany Creek looked to attack. Oh, taken by Horry but fumbled. And Jackson's almost in there to take advantage. Long range shot, saved by Horry. And the rebound's going to fall across the byline. North Star players remained down after that one. Jackson looking for Fujimoto. Plays it back. And Horry makes the save. Now it's Sean Yule, who's down here for North Star, getting back to his feet. As we have an Albany Creek corner. Played short this time. Oh, it's taken a flexion. And in the back of the net. And Albany Creek running rough shot over North Star here at the moment. Patrick Ory and the latest to get on the scoreboard. 5-0. And does his own little celebration there in conjunction with Jacob Reynolds. He's got a copy yellow card for that one. I don't think he really cares. About one does Patrick Orium. Agata. Can Northstar put some respectability back into this scoreline? Tomotsu does. And on the hour, Northstar pull one back. Yuzuki Tomotsu. Good little footwork there. Cameron Smith gets something on it, but just can't handle it. But it seems beyond North Star here at the moment as Maxwell 
Plays the ball on for Hiriyama. Shoots wide of the post. Goal kick comes from Smith. Makes it into his attacking half. Now it's played on for Jackson. And it's just snuck into the back of the net. Let's take another look at that. Travis Jackson puts the ball and it's ended up in the back of the net. Or has it? Yes, it has. Definitely went into the back of the net. North Star moving the ball on quickly. Maxwell then on for Tomotsu. He has a double, but his side still trailed by four goals. As Albany Creek lead North Star 6-2. For Jamoto. On for Orium. Now it's Domofsky. Save from Horry. And Jackson couldn't find the goal this time. Trying to work it out from the back uh, North Star. With an effective pass, Garter tried to get to it. Orium takes advantage, plays it on for Travis Jackson. Makes it 7-2. Travis Jackson chips the keeper. And here they come again, Albany Creek. Unable to be dealt with there by Murata and Albany Creek almost get on the board once again. Now they're looking to move the ball quickly. Sullivan. Oh, that's another great strike. Albany Creek now have eight. Jacob Sullivan. Back heel there for Kevin Crawford. Club stalwart and 8-2 lead. <laughs> Referee blows a full-time whistle and a dominant Albany Creek performance tonight. 8-2 winners over North Star and that should give them some relief in the relegation battle. And now we're out to St. Lucia for another match that's critical in terms of the relegation battle. It's UQFC versus Brisbane Force. And UQFC relatively safe now in the club championship. It's Brisbane Force who are fighting to avoid relegation. But we can tell you that they did pick up the reserves match and banked another nine points in the club championship standings. As the cross played in there by McCoy, aimed towards Williams. Free kick here to the force. And unable to be controlled on that occasion by Peter. Throw in here from UQFC. Samuels. Square for Kokel. Played on there by David for Duckworth. And Joseph Duckworth has the opening goal for UQFC. Let's take another look at that. Ball played through. On that graphic, looks to be onside. Joseph Duckworth picking the ball up on the edge of the box, using his left foot, shaping it around Tom Sullivan. And UQFC take a 1-0 lead. Sullivan plays the goal kick short. Peter. One there by Nakai for UQFC. David goes down under the challenge from Chad Houston. Referee blows the whistle, points to the penalty spots. And UQFC are going to have a chance to double their lead from 12 yards. The challenge there from Chad Houston on Loic David, deemed to be illegal by referee Andrew Lindsay. David remains down. Ryan Kokel steps up to take the penalty kick. Saved there by Sullivan. But we're going to have a retake. There must have been some encroachment. Let's see if we can pick it up. Yeah, we can see the assistant's flag go up. I think he's flagged Carroll for moving off his line early in a forward motion rather than side to side. 
Second effort there from Ryan Kokel. And UQFC do take a 2-0 lead now. Corner in from Kokel. Headed on and cleared off the line. And Nicolades sends his second effort over the crossbar. Sullivan sends his goal kick long. Oh, clear foul there on the Brisbane Force player. Plays allowed to continue. Referee's assistant's got his flag up, though. So you can get a better look on that one. Force players claiming why was an advantage played. And I think the referee spotted the Brisbane Force player offside. And that's why the play didn't continue. Peter. McCoy. Now it's Adamson. In for Peter. McCoy looking for a corner and gets one. Trying to clear it deep out of their defence out of the force. Now McCoy is free. He'll be one on one here with Duncan Short. And Duncan Short does the tidy up work. Ball's played in, headed on by McCoy. Can't get it on target. Brisbane Force free kick. Falls for Toots. Now it's Peter and Emmanuel Peter. That could be a crucial goal there for Brisbane Force in terms of getting some points out of this match. Gardor Toots finds Emmanuel Peter. UQ players looking for offside but not given by the assistant. Toots. For each knee. Now on for Peter. Brisbane Force looking dangerous. Hamad. Able to beat Alex Mann. Gets his cross in. In fact, it's a red card. No, 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 almost. He's pulled out the wrong card, did Andrew Lindsay. I think Alex Mann had a bit of a heart attack there. Guard or took it with the free kick. And what's the referee ruled on this occasion? Let's take a look. Brisbane Force player goes down in the box. Thinks that James Price. And red card is banished this time. And it's James Price who's been sent off for the Brisbane Force. Look to be unusual circumstances there. Perhaps he said something to the official. Complaints coming in, but James Price can argue his case as much as he likes, but he's going to be having an early shower. Toot. Adamson. Can Force get a point out of this late? Krakelis. Saved by Short. Sullivan, all clear and straight to the UQFC player. Now it's Duckworth. Duckworth, can he get a double? Plenty of white shirts around him off the woodwork. Man, turns, can't get his shot on target. And that's full time. UQFC come away 2-1 winners against the Brisbane Force here at the University of Queensland. So just the three matches in round 22 of the Trophy Superstore Premier League this weekend with the other three being postponed. We've seen two of those games with Albany Creek defeating North Star 8-2, UQFC 2-1 over Brisbane Force, while Rochdale's unhappy season came to an end, defeated 6-0 by Lions FC. Onto the table now and it's a familiar look, but Capella Bar still have two catch-up games in hand in which they can climb as high as fifth. One of their opponents will be North Star, and if they can conquer Capella Bar, they'll avoid the dreaded wooden spoon. The Trophy Superstore Premier League Championship table and Ipswich Knights weren't able to get on the park this weekend, so they haven't been able to advance. Brisbane Force picking up nine points, while Albany Creek with a clean sweep picked up 33 points and look to have done their cause a whole lot of good. Onto the Capital League's tables and in Capital League 1, if Turinga can secure a win from one of their two catch-up matches, they'll get promoted to the Premier League next year. Pine Hills and South United confirmed for relegation. In Capital League 2, we've still got the semi-finals race to work out as well as who between Kangaroo Point and Slacks Creek will be relegated. 
In Capital League 3, Centenary Stormers win over Virginia on the weekend. Confirm them as premiers. New Farmer and Narangbar will still fight out the fourth spot, while Brighton and Logan City will be relegated. And in Capital League 4, it's still open between Tarragindi and Bethania as to who will be promoted to Capital League 3 next year. The women's now and in the South East Queensland Women's Premier League, it's the gap leading the way from Palm Beach, UQFC and Redlands. Olympic also there, equal on 34 points. In Division 2, Peninsula, Annalee Mitchelton and South West Queensland Thunder. While in the Brisbane Women's Premier League, Ipswich Knights lead from Eastern Suburbs, The Gap and Annalee. Next week, our highlight show takes us to Jack Spear Park at Turinga for Champion of Champions playoff action to determine who will represent football Brisbane in the Champion of Champions senior men's competition as East take on the gap. And those two clubs again meet in the women's Elaine Watson Cup final. Thank <laughs> you.